is B, and this is Art Life. Thank you so much for joining me today. Together, we're going to be creating a library bag from this calico kind of material. Now, I'm already using a pre made library bag but you can easily sew up some string here using any type of material now i actually didn't use any paints today but it looks like i have i've actually used some markers or water soluble textures and added some water to create paint so come with me and i'll show you how to do this right now so all you'll need for our library bag task today is an actual library bag. Now, Zart Art actually sell these calico bags for a really cost-effective price. And so you'd be able to get a whole class set or just a couple if you'd like them. And they already come fantastic, ready to go library bags just like this. I'll be decorating one of those today. You'll also need some water-soluble markers. Now, most textures or markers are water-soluble. Um, I know that Faber-Castell ones and Crayola ones are as well. And today I'll be using um, Zart again, which are some thin markers and they come a huge variety of colors. And you'll be able to see that when I'm starting to color in. You'll also need some water and brushes because we're gonna add water to these textures to turn them into paint. Now you will need some sort of permanent pen as well. Because we're wanting to do some outlines, we don't want the permanent pen to run like the textures do. So you could use some sort of permanent marker like this, a Sharpie. Today, I'm gonna to be using a chalk marker, which I got from Kmart. So you'd be able to see what that looks like. Let's get started. It's a fantastic task for a whole class for you to create your very own bags with personalized names on them. So please make sure if you create a class worth or even just at home, please tag me at Artlife Art Lessons on Facebook or at artlife.melv on Instagram because I would love to see what you're doing at home. Now, when you're drawing, it's good to come up with some sort of theme. If you're doing young kids, you might choose to just get them to do some simple shapes like this. You might even get them to trace some shapes depending on the age level of your child or the students you're working with, probably will depend on the level of detail or the sophistication of the drawing. But today I'm using a chalk marker. These are fantastic because they're essentially paint and you can see that the color's really vibrant. If you don't have anything like this, I just got them from Kmart, but if you don't have anything like this, a permanent marker, a Sharpie will work. We want it to be a permanent marker though, because in using water, we don't want the drawing part to bleed or go watery. So I'm gonna do um, a drawing today of a really large sort of um, rainforest leaf. I've done this in the past on another activity, but I wanna show you what it looks like. The essential sort of shape you're going for is a large, heart that you're actually going to bring the parts of the leaf in and then out again but you can see the outside of the shape becomes a heart like this in out in out. So I'm going to do this main leaf here. Do a few holes. The monstera leaves often have some holes in them. So I just want to show you what it looks like, but I'm actually going to add some of these other geometric kind of shapes amongst this design um, just to show you what it looks like if you're doing something a little bit more simple. It's at this point too that if you're doing this for your child and you need a name on the bag, that you might actually write the name with the permanent pen.
So this part of the task is very much up to you. You might um, ask the students or your child to create something that is relevant to what you're learning about. And when you do it, all you need to do is just draw something that you're really happy with. And I'm gonna teach you now how to add color in an interesting way. So I've done my big rainforest leaf here as my main subject, and I've got a few other geometric kind of shapes going on to fill the space. So I don't need my chalk pen or permanent marker anymore. I'm now moving to water soluble pens. The ones I'm using here are from Zart. They're really cool. I'll pop them in the description below. What I like about them is you can see here, they don't just offer one color. For example, with purple, there's three different versions of the purple. So it really helps when building up a really dynamic color palette and getting the colors to really blend together nicely. So the main part now is to collect some colors that are similar to one another. So I'm going to do an abstract kind of monsteria leaf here using pinks, purples, and a bit of blue. These are harmonious colors. They're colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And it means that when the colors blend together, they're going to blend nicely. They're not going to blend into a pooey brown or anything like that. I'll show you what I mean. So now I'm just taking some time to literally and quite messily add color. I'm coloring in. I am leaving some of my calico bag white. I don't need to color the entire thing. I'm working with the different versions of my colors. I'm coloring in quite thickly some areas and then just quite thinly in other areas. So as you can see, you do not need to be too precious with it, which is why this type of task is fantastic for younger ones. All right, now that I've added a few different kind of versions of my color here, I want to show you what happens when you add water. I've got my water and literally all I'm going to do needs to be nice clean water. <laughs> you can see that as I add water, my textures are actually turning into paint. The areas that I've painted in a darker kind of um, heavier sort of shade, it will stay nice and dark. But we want these colors to sort of play with each other, blend and bleed. We want them to sort of join up like that. And I want to stay within the confines of the shape that I've drawn. Now at this point, I want you to notice that my permanent pen or my chalk marker is not bleeding it's not turning into paint and that is what we want we want the colors to blend and we want the outline or the drawing to stay as it is now if I add too much water it will bleed out outside of my sort of lines here but that actually looks quite nice anyway um, so I'm just going to go ahead now and do a whole lot of coloring in and then add some water afterwards Notice when I'm coloring in, I am changing up the colors, but, but each time I'm coloring in a new shape, I am sticking to harmonious colors. For example, down here, I'm doing blues and greens. Over here, I'm doing orange and red. The colors will always need to work nicely together in order to blend without making an absolute mess. So I'm now taking some time to add some water to each of the shapes that I've colored in, turning my markers into watercolor paint.
So as you can see, if you're wanting to paint a Calico Library bag, you do not need fabric paint or any sort of special paint. Literally, all you need are some water-soluble markers, and that'll do the trick. So it's as simple as that. I really hope you've enjoyed creating library bags with me today and turning textures into paint. Please make sure you subscribe, like and comment for future videos and have a great day.